Just gonna mass creep my mountain king and get level 5. And if you take a look at Sea Space, he's now doing that triple lore bear, which is what he should have been doing 10 minutes ago. Or not 10 minutes ago, like 5 minutes ago. And if he would have been doing that 5 minutes ago, he would be in a much better position to win the game. A lot of times on LT, whenever I go Warden, now Solo Warden is good on maps like TS or um, TS or EI or something, but it's really only good on maps you can power creep level 3 for the reasons I explained at the beginning. But, um... Uh, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, on maps like this, especially where your damn power creep is a thing to level 3, you're going to want to get a second hero. Um, the only time you want to go solo hero is when you have a DH, because solo DH is like worth 100 food and you can kill a lot of stuff with it. But, like, level 6 Warden really is, I mean, it's good, it's good and it adds to your army a lot, but it's nowhere near as good as a solo DH. That's why you see solo DH a lot on LT when Night Elf have to play human. Um, but, as I was trying to say, um, I always, usually whenever I go Warden on LT, I get a second hero and I get a Keeper, and basically I just get that for hero focusing purposes, because right at the start of the fight you can um, Shadow Strike and Entangle a hero, and that basically just kills the Archmage alone, with, if he doesn't have any invol or healing pots, that's, I mean, you can win the game off of that alone. And a quick thing to note, uh, since I saw my Archmage, my Archmage, my own King, almost level 5 uh, from that XP Tome, I did, I was actually going to push right after that, but I really wanted a Mountain King level 5, so I, I go down to this gold mine and I get another Tome of Experience. This helps me out. I don't even Do I pick it up? I don't think I pick it up. I I'm stupid. Oh, uh, another thing, quick, quick thing to note. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed my expansion at top. Since there is towers there, uh, there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't expand if you have towers. If you tower push the Night Elf, there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't put an expansion there when you have your towers there from the push. That is kind of embarrassing. Lot I did not pick up the XP tone. I'd be level like I'd be like almost level six. Jesus. Yeah, it really, it really doesn't matter. This game was over when he pushed his expo at the top. Research complete. So tell me why, like, I couldn't have an idea why Warren is good versus undead on TS. I see so many pros do that now. I don't understand why what's so good about it. Even though it's not relative yeah, to this not matchup, relative but I mean, matchup, but I mean, it's good because you can get level three really fast. And the thing is, you can get level three faster than they can. And you basically, you'll, I mean, you'll see this every time whenever people go warden, is you creep level three absolutely as fast as you can, and then you go push and you kill what you can. And if their hero is still level two, you can usually kill their hero. Um, or at least force a TP or something. Um, another reason why it's so good is because uh, if you're, are you asking against undead specifically on TS? Uh, uh, undead inhuman. You can answer both. You can answer both. Well, undead specifically on TS, it's really good. Or, or even on TM, I like going warden on TM a lot too, because um, a DK and ghouls cannot harass you on either one of those maps. What happens if a DK comes, you just shadow strike the DK, and you can get the DK super, super low. So it basically, it's almost like a free creep to level 3. That's why you see people do it. Um, they can't harass you. If they harass you, they're going to take too much damage on their death knight. And so basically that forces them to creep, but the thing is you can creep faster than they can. So you'll get level 3, they'll only be level 2, and then you can go push them or do whatever you want. That's, that's why Warden is really powerful on TM and on TS. But every time you go warden, you always do the double AOW creep, and you creep it super fast. Like that—that was—that was one of Cecil's big flaws in this: is that he built that first AOW on that front hill, which served no purpose whatsoever, and he built the second AOW by the farm, and it wasn't even close enough to the mine, and he didn't even creep it until the archmage was already level three. So it was basically a—I think. He just kind of missed out a lot on the early game, and he didn't go bears fast enough. And I think those were the two reasons why I think Cecil's going to lose this game. That was a really good, really good answer. I didn't expect it to be like that. But another thing to note on the game right now, uh, pretty much I have one griffin to kill bears, and as you saw, he did take out my main. I decided to leave it because... I have an expansion on my natural, I have expansion at top, uh, it's it's not really smart to TP, especially if you don't think you can win the fight and he has the position when you TP in. Uh, since I was already in the middle of the map when he initially attacked my main, uh, there's no point to TP back to your base unless he, unless like you know you're attacking his main and you're killing off buildings and stuff, 
at a certain time when you kill lords and like you know moon walls and stuff that's when you can TP back to your base but he did kill my main I did I think another mistake I made in this game is I didn't get masonry upgrades it's, like on this map it doesn't matter if you're base racing getting tanks towers or whatever I only got one masonry upgrade if I had, if I had three masonry upgrades he wouldn't be able to kill like my build it would seriously literally take him at least 20 minutes to kill my my base and this is the final fight right now right now i hate masonry so much <laughs> that's the stupidest skill i forget who i was playing with i was oh i was doing an ffa game the other day and it was like an hour and a half long and there were two humans an orc and someone else it was me infernal hero and bacon and it was three three masonry upgrades and bacon i don't know you get none of you guys probably know bacon but Bacon, he <laughs> he was playing human, and he never plays human, and he goes just completely out of the blue, like, I don't know, 15 minutes into the game, he goes, holy fuck, level 3 masonry is only 125 gold? That shit should be like 600 gold. <laughs> it was really funny, but... <laughs> but anyway, it really should be 600 gold, because it makes your buildings invincible. That's 600. I, I could see it costing more wood. In my, in my opinion, it should just cost like 400 wood, in my opinion, but uh... Yeah, no, but, no, 600 is an exaggeration, but it should cost more. Or at least be decreased in its efficiency. So as you saw, that was the last fight. Um, mistake Cecil made, like what a lot of said, he has a shop right there in his base and he doesn't buy into a magic potion, which is a huge mistake. And since I have level 3 bolt, level 5 Mount King from getting that experience tome, uh... And just from creeping since my Archimedes died, um, it allowed me pretty much to control his warden and bolt whenever I want. And since I also have a level, f well, level six Archimedes right now, I level two, level two brilliance. I can pretty much bolt at will with brilliance or level three bolt bolting at will. It's like the ultimate nuke. So that game's, another done. Thing, that game's done. Another thing that I didn't mention is if you do that creep pattern that I mentioned where you build the first OW at the mine and the second OW at the shop, right as soon as you finish that second creep, the boots are going to become available for you. And what you can do is you you basically you leave a wisp over at the, at the human expo and you'll finish that mine, you'll get level 3, and then you go, you buy the boots and the staff, and you can just staff your way over to the to the expo and then like a lot of pros what you'll see it depends if you're gonna try and do like a mass hunt push to actually just try and kill the expo and win the game if you're gonna do that you go level two fan of knives and two level two fan of knives will kill every peon so that works really efficiently really efficiently but also if you're gonna try and expo the mine that you crept at the beginning which is also a good strat but if you're gonna do that you're gonna want to go level two shadow strike and try and kill his hero the reason being is without a hero he can't push your expo so that's that's why you see what you do in the pro replays because in the pro replays a lot of times like on those TS maps you'll see they go they'll do that fast creep level 3 warden and then they'll staff in at the expo and then they'll go level 2 fan of knives and kill all the peons and they'll they'll like mass hunt glaive push it and that's the reason that they do that and it is really effective so it, although it does take a lot of practice to do it like it'll take you 10 games just to get the just to get the build order and the hero strat, like it just it, it it'll take you a couple times just to get it down, but it is really effective once you know how to do it. All right, so that's that game. All right, um, you want to get the other game queued up, priest? I already have it queued up. This is actually going to be a uh, lot of versus Sonky. Sonky's being in account. Sandcastles on the east. Uh, there's a lot of, like, a lot of controversial stuff happening in Sonky right now, at least recently. I don't know when you guys are going to be listening to this audio, but recently he just came out with an interview, and a lot of people don't like him now, but I still like him. He's a great human player, great American player. And Lionel just I like owns him this game. People say they don't like him because he's cocky, but he's cocky because he's really good, so... And the thing is, everything he said in that interview was true. Like, he was saying he practices against... The thing, the thing that did cause discrepancy is the fact that he said that, um... North American players basically can't compete against European and Asian players, and that's true. It's com it's completely 100% true. Like, now I'm I don't consider myself one of the best American players, but I definitely think I can compete at the like at the top American tier. But whenever it comes to like the top European tier and the top Asian tier, I get completely completely raped. So, I mean, that's just something for you to base. Uh, it's, we're doing this audio at like. 6.45 in the morning and there's going to be an Exlo Cup starting in about I don't know, like two hours or something and I'm probably going to play in it. And the thing is I always do well in the Exlo Cups until I have to play an Asian player. <laughs> and every time I play an Asian player, I end up losing. So, 
I mean, that's just to give you an idea. And this really is only...